morning everybody i'm dr karan bhatia i'm a cornea cataract and refractive surgeon and today i'll be talking about transitioning to topical phaco emulsification so why do we need to do topical phaco well the demand is there now if you don't do it your patients will go patients want injection less surgery they want a more comfortable environment for their surgery now so basically you need to get out of your comfort zone oh, moreover it's a good marketing strategy as well when a young ophthalmologist goes to for a new job topical phaco is the basic thing they ask for it's now in demand by the patients as well patients are more comfortable following surgery it creates a wow factor but big reason for that is that injections are not given and this creates a big psychological relief from fear for the patient there's no bandages or the bandage time is significantly reduced because of topical phaco and the biggest thing is that there's faster vision recovery the block related complications are avoided because of it however drops have to be started a bit earlier here so you are always questioning yourself how will i complete this well it's just a mental block and you need to get over it so when you start this the most important part of doing topical phaco emulsification is to choose the right patient the patient should be cooperative do not choose a patient with a deep set orbit specifically for the beginners it should have a good mediastinum and should be an uncomplicated case ideally it is good to start with an s2 grade or so and all depends on your comfort level the only rule is do not compromise the quality of the surgery a simple injection is better if the outcome can be improved what important point is minimally touch the conjunctiva i'll show you a video over here where accidentally i touched the conjunctiva after that the patient had pain and then he started moving his eyes and the surgery became a tough job another important point is do not touch the iris point 1 patient will have pain and point 2 will be that the pupil will constrict and surgery will become more difficult you can also use intracameral lignocaine a good way to transition is by giving subconjunctival injection of lignocaine now this can be done in the following ways where you ask the patient to look down using a forceps grab the conjunctiva and give a small amount of injection in the subconjunctiva space so this diffuses nicely and therefore if you hold the conjunctiva the patient will not have that much pain but the problem is subconjunctival hemorrhages are pretty common so you have to look out for that coming to the next part is the incisions now the incisions the best way is if you to give incisions and you don't want the patient to feel any pain is used to use buds to hold the eye or to grip the eye or to anchor the eye so this can be done in the similar in, in the as shown in the video over here to make the main corneal incision what you can do over here is that you can see over here that a curved tying forceps is being is introduced inside the second side port and this gives a very good anchorage you can also hold at the limbus but this gives a very good anchorage and the tunnel should act, the corneal section should actually be squarish this is more produced with a 2.2 mm keratome a 2.8 produces a somewhat a rectangular incision another point is that it temporal it it's easier to do in comparison to nasal and because because of a greater exposure let's look at another video over here now the anchor is being given with a bud and the incision is being made remember one important point is when you're giving incisions is do not press a lot into the eye or do not forcefully use the blade otherwise the ac will collapse a bit and you don't want that other if it does collapse inject over d and then again try So over here I am finding a little bit difficulty, but again be gentle with the eye. That's important. Again, I am using over here a second instrument which is introduced inside the 
second side port and I'm doing the rexis in the normal manner. You can use a McPherson forceps, you can use a curved tying forceps, you can even use a Sinsky's hook, whatever is comfortable, it gives good anchorage and since you're not touching the conjunctiva, the patient does not have much pain. Now since in this rexis part over here, when I was doing the rexis, it was a little problem, the AC collapsed a little bit or became shallow, so I injected OVD and then completed the rexis. Now again, I will inject it OVD inside the anterior chamber to make it deep. Always do that when you're trying before making the corneal section. Then I'm introducing a second instrument over here through the uh, second side port. This gives a good anchorage and then I'm making my biplanar corneal incision. You can also use the forceps, however, as I said, forceps has a disadvantage that subconjunctival hemorrhages can take place. So, when you do use the forceps, always hold it at the limbus. The further away you go from the limbus, the chances of subconjunctival hemorrhage are much more. Then again, in the similar manner, after injecting OBD inside, you can hold at the limbus and also do the biplanar corneal section as is seen in this video. Now let's look at a whole case. Now using buds as anchorage, I'm making the two side ports. Remember to be gentle with the eye, do not push too much inside. OVD is injected in, inside the eye. and then using a second instrument to anchor via the side port, a continuous curvilinear capsule rexis is done in the normal fashion. And again using the anchorage on the side port, second side port with the second instrument over here being a McPherson's, the biplanar corner section is being created. This is followed by gentle wash of a little bit amount of OBD from the anterior chamber along with a good hydro dissection. OVD is injected again and after that you, gen you gently rock the nucleus a bit to see that whether it is rotating or not which is a prerequisite to do phaco emulsification. Then over here if you look very closely what I have done is that I have before introducing my phaco probe I have introduced my second instrument. Now this gives a very good, again it gives a good anchorage and then since I have got a hold of the globe nicely, I can introduce my FACO probe with, the, with ease. Now I prefer to turn the irrigation after going inside the anterior chamber, that's my preference. Then this is followed by a direct chop. Then the other fragments again, you do a chopping and make as small nuclear fragments as possible and emulsify the same. The lens is rotated, again it is broken and emulsification is done. Remember to be very gentle. And if the patient is actually moving a little bit, the second instrument gives very good anchorage. Now you've seen over here, I've withdrawn my second instrument, that is my chopper. My phaco probe is still inside with irrigation on and I'm going with my left hand, injecting OVD inside the anterior chamber and then I have brought up my phaco probe. And after which, I've increased my side port a little bit to accommodate my bimanual bi IA. There's an epinuclear sheet over there, which can take a bit of time. And then the cortex is aspirated in the normal fashion. During the aspiration part of the bimanual eye, followed by polish. Again, I've injected OVD and then brought out my irrigating part of the bimanual eye. I've switched sides now, and again, I'm doing 
irrigation aspiration along with and then polishing was done. After injecting OVD again into the anterior chamber, now implanting a foldable lens into the bag. Now this is a trifocal lens with plate haptics. The plate haptics, the, the leading one should go into the bag and the other one is pushed using a Sinsky hook into the bag. Now after done IA, now you see my irrigation part is still there inside the anterior chamber. Now I'm sealing all the ports. First the side port, then the main port. And then I'm bringing out my irrigation apparatus and then I'm sealing the second side port. And this prevents the collapse of the anterior chamber or fluctuation in the anterior chamber. And this fluctuation is very important specifically for toric aisles because this fluctuation can actually result in rotation of the toric aisle. Now, another method of doing this or reducing this time is after injecting the aisle, you first hydrate the main port. Then by the bimanual IA, you can irrigate or uh, you can uh, remove the visco and then you can uh, hydrate the side ports in the fashion shown in the video. Let's look at another case. Uh, this is a case of a brown cataract. So my point of showing this video over here is that even heart cataracts can be done under topical anesthesia. So I introduced my FACO proof here earlier on. Little bit shaving of the anterior part or the anterior part of the lens is done, followed by impalement of the FACO probe into the substance of the nucleus, followed by a good vertical chop. Now these brown cataracts are very leathery. It is extremely important that you separate till the level of the posterior plate, otherwise the surgery can become a little bit difficult. Another point is that they have very weak bags and zonules, so you do not want to do a, a lot of manipulation because a PCR can easily occur in such cases. So the trick in handling these cases is to do a good vertical chop and make it into extremely small or as small possible pieces of, uh, of the nuclear matter. Another method is, instead of doing the direct chop, what one can do is, you can first create a crater and then do the direct chop. Because of the crater, you can go directly into the main part of the, or the main substance of the lens and then chopping can become easier. So after this has been separated into multiple small pieces, emulsification is carried out and again you're trying to break it into as small pieces as possible. These cases require a lot of patience and you need to give time. A very important part of these cases is to use this coat. Now this coat coats the endothelium and prevents it from damage. So you can basically use the soft shell technique or a modified soft shell technique where you inject visco on under the surface of the cornea and followed by HPMC underneath it. So you can see in this video over here that the fibers are extremely leathery so you have to be very careful the chopper is also quite sharp again as i said try to break into as small pieces as possible because the FACO energy is going to be used less than and which is better for the eye. It 
it is important to do this at the iris plane as much as possible <coughs> you don't want to go to to damage the pc or to anterior to damage the endothelium and see since the last part of the nuclear matter is remaining i've injected viscoat inside to push the pc a little bit backward so because if surge does occur the pc does not touch the phaco probe and then the remaining pieces of the nucleus are emulsified in the manner shown before this was done using a compact machine i have no financial interests now this is another case for white cataract the stop and chop was done so a central trench was created it is important to go as deep as possible and then the separation of the two halves of the nucleus try to separate you have to actually separate till the posterior plate and then when you got the two parts you can start chopping again try to do as much as phaco possible in the iris plane but sometimes it does become a little difficult chop into as small pieces as possible hold and then chop the trick to chopping good chopping is that you should hold in the thick part of the nucleus if you hold in the superficial part of the nucleus you will give way it will not hold properly and your chopping will always be inadequate and you will not be able to separate up to the posterior plate these white cataracts are somewhat easier in comparison to the brown cataract that i had shown earlier the only the mo the most important part or the trickiest part in such cases is to do a good rexis so you can either do a double rexis or you can do it onion peel rexis whatever suits you better so in even in such cases in topical phaco if a complication such as a pcr occurs as you can see in this video over here it's extremely important that you don't panic you can manage these sort of cases under topical anesthesia and you can do dry aspiration as you can see over here and the cortex is removed if any vitreous is there vitrectomy has to be done all can be under topical anesthesia depending again depending on how much the patient is cooperative and in such a case a large pcr a three piece iol was implanted into the sulcus if the patient does have a problem if there are complication worsens you can always give a subclinance block now this is another video of a patient where a zonal dialysis occur you can't see the zd area over here because i've injected ovd to push the back forward backwards into place and then i am implanting a capsule tension ring i see over here trying to hold the ctr by mistake i touched the conjunctiva the patient had pain he started wincing and now his eyelid has started moving which it wasn't moving before so this is very important that you don't touch the surrounding tissues and do as minimal manipulation as possible and even under topical CTRs and other complicated things can be done. To conclude, it is important to choose the right patient. Minimal manipulation is absolutely necessary, and everything depends on your comfort level. Be confident. You may be able to lift Munir. It's just a mental block. Thank you so much.